Hey everybody, Dootzels here and welcome to the final episode of Final Fantasy VII. Last time we made the treacherous journey down to the northern cave, and here we lay at the bottom in our good old friend Point of No Return. My our, my squad is fully healed. I haven't done uh, any prep or any uh, further preparations since the previous episode besides healing. So, you know what? I think I'm just gonna roll with whatever party we got. Alright. Let's get going. Alright, everyone. Let's mosey. Really, Cloud? That's the word that you use in your moment of triumph? Damn, again? Stop saying it like a wimp. Can't you say, move out, or something? Move out! That's how you do it, let's not mosey. What?! Look at the number! Ah! Sparks, they're coming out in full force! Yo, Cloud, you go first! Okay, I'm going alone. Shut up! Won't do us no good with everyone back here! Barrett's right. You take two of us with you, and the rest go first. Uh, the, 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 blah, 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 blah. the rest will catch up with you later. Is this like a practice run before the final battle? Yeah, a major practice run. I'm fine with that. It's probably more fun than meeting Sephiroth down there. Hmm, this might be fun to pass time. Guys, it's burping. You better get down there to calm the stomach acid. They're coming. They're already on the floor next to us. Cloud, hurry up and make up your mind. Oh, you know who I- You already know who I'm- The game already knows who I'm picking. Alright, let's do this. The squad is back together. All of you. Later. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good time. Yeah, later. Stop puking on us. Welcome to Inside of the Planet. With the Genova theme playing, on every platform we jump down to, we have a preset battle with, in, with a certain enemy. A certain very strong enemy. This is one we haven't seen before. I believe that, yes, this is the Iron Man. This is one of the... One of the enemies that you could uh, morph into an item that uh, we actually didn't get to see. But uh, yeah, here's an Iron Man now. It's a big old dude with a big old cleaver, but hey, still, no, it's no match for out for us just nuking. Oh, wow, oh my god, that only did 500 damage. And it looks like you have a shield up. Okay. Um, I guess physical attacks are your best option? Okay. Well, Iron Man's dead. Spoilers for Endgame, but you probably already saw that. And we get 10,000 experience from that, getting up, getting level ups on Cloud and Nanaki. Alright, next platform, what do we have here? Or, next platform, what do we have here? We have ourselves... Oh boy, it's another dragon zombie. Well, you know what? I feel like doing something that I haven't done before that I kind of want to show off. I'm going to show you what... The Knights of the Round Table are. Infinite summons, 250 MP, and I'm just gonna let the animation play. Just gonna let it play, no speed up. And we're just gonna sit here and admire the fact that I cheated to get this. Twice. Boom. Dragon zombie down. That did like, what, 70? I, I counted the hits. That was 13 hits. What's 13 times 6,000? Like, what, 70,000-ish damage? 
Yeah. Because, you know, 6,000 damage per hit, 13 hits. Yeah. That's what Knights of the Round Table is. And that is 250 MP, so I'm just gonna fuel right back up. I'm leaving that uncut. I'm leaving that animation just completely uncut. Alright. And one more scripted encounter. We have another dragon zombie. Alright. Now let's see what is in store at the bottom of the center of the planet. Another scripted encounter. Okay. Another Iron Man. And another 10,000 experience for us. Jeez, that's a lot of experience before uh, uh, big plot stuff. Alright. Remember, guys. We all play Final Fantasy VII for the plot. There's going to be another scripted encounter on this one. I'm calling it. Yes, I got it. Alan Magni. No, it's another Iron Man. Dang it. Healing up after every battle because I'm just so nervous. Alamagni. Dragon Zombie. Dang it. Okay, you know what? Fine. I have an Earth Wraith. Ooh, actually, you know what? Now that Nanaki used that, I might actually just... I'm going to switch that to Cosmo Memory because Cosmo Memory is actually pretty good for most of the fights that are coming up next. Alamagni. No, it's another Dragon Zombie. All right. And that is... Uh... Is that the end of this little gauntlet? Is it the end? Yes, it is. Where are we? Wha what? Genova? It's coming! Meet the final battle with Genova. Genova Synthesis. Let's go, let's go ahead and sense the- wait, why does it say Synthiesa? Eh, whatever. Alright, let's- let's go and just give it an Omni Slash and put it in sense. Okay. Well, um... Crap. Uh, I can't really- Dude, I can't- Magic ha- Alright, I'll, I'll use Magic Hammer to describe what I'm looking for, but, um... They're just- this Genova battle is actually pretty interesting, because there are- well, now they're all dead now, so I can't exactly show that. Thanks, Cloud. But, uh, yeah. Genova Synthesis has three different hitboxes. It's got A, B, and C, with B and C being the two tentacles to the sides of it. Um, uh, if both of the tentacles are up, then she gains the ability to use Bio 2 on the entire party. If only C is alive, then it can use Cure 3, and if, um, B is alive and C isn't, then it can use Stop. So... It's nice to use a good old AoE attack just to finish them all pretty quickly. And, oh crap, okay. Uh, when Genova falls below 15,000 health, okay. Jeez, that was quick, that was quick, okay. Um, well, all right, in this, in this scene, I'm just gonna describe what I was trying to say. If Gen when Genova life falls below 15,000 health, a five turn countdown will start. If that runs out, Genova Synthesis will cast Ultima on the entire party and then die afterwards, giving the yeah, giving the party no experience or AP. I mean, this it's just 15,000 health. Like you're not it's 15,000 health in five turns. That's not that much. And by the way, if you use Knights of the Round Table, I'm pretty sure it does enough damage to just instantly kill her. So that's nice. And another thing that we didn't really get to show off just because of how quickly we took her out is that if the is that her defense is boosted when tentacle B is dead and her magic defense is boost is boosted when tentacle C is dead. So you can do some strategy on which tentacle you do want to take out. But honestly, I just want to take out both of them. I don't really want to deal with having the poison party or anything. But now, now that we've beaten Genova one last time, the white materia. Light. A light. 
Is this... Is this light... holy? So everyone's together again? Ugh. There he is. Sephiroth! Ugh. Is this Sephiroth's power? Uh, my body. I can't control my body. Ugh. My front legs, my hind legs, my tail's about to rip off! This is definitely not good. He's way out of our league. I... I don't know if I can go on. Cloud. Cloud. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so Vincent doesn't get a voice line? There. It's there. Cloud? Holy. Holy is there. Holy materia is shining. Aerith's prayer is shining. Holy. Aerith. It's not over yet. This isn't the end yet. Split your allies into two groups. This is an interesting part, because now, you are forced to split the party. This is an interesting, uh, kind of way that this game handles this, because this is a point where you can split- where the party is split in up- in one to three groups. You only get to use one party, like, I guess a core party, if Genova- if Genova Synthesis used 13 turns before counting down. Your party's lowest level is 60 is 34 or lower and your average party level is is 53 or lower. So that kind of puts what's going on next in a, a you could say a bit of a simple mode if you're if you just I don't know, fast forwarded through fights or not fast forwarded, skipped fights or whatever. And two parties will be formed if you didn't pick up one of the op if you didn't pick up on the optional characters. Your lowest level is 48, is 44 or less, and your party's average level is uh, 67. Um, well, I guess these are kind of criteria, not really constraints, because uh, if you get to form three parties, then that means that you have to fulfill these conditions. You have to obtain every character. Genova Synthesis used 12 turns or less, and your lowest level party member is 45 and up, and your average level is 68 or higher. So that basically, that just means that you have a much stronger party, a more well-rounded party, and you can afford to have multiple people in multiple sections. However, I'm going to completely ignore what this game is trying to get me to do and just put random crap in random in this party. Let's go, everyone. All right, let's do this. Yeah, oh, never mind. okay. No way we're gonna lose. I'm going to see it through to the end. For our future, and that of the planet! I understand now, Grandpa. This is my mission. I won't let the life stream or the planet wither away. I was frozen in time, but now I feel as though my time is truly beginning. Sephiroth! It's your- now it's your time to sleep for the ages. Aerith's memories. Our memories. We came to tell you our memories. Come planet, show us your answer. And Sephiroth. To the settling of everything. Sephiroth's not getting anything to say. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate considering this, you know, big final scene. Meet! 
Sephiroth Bizarro. Think about the secret sequence of five targets. There are five different targets that you can target. A, C, uh, A, C, E, and, uh, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so, Bizarro Energy, blah, blah, blah. Where is my big guard? Big guard is immediately going up. J uh, not Genova. Uh, Bizarro Sephiroth is, an, is a boss with multiple different elements associated with it because of its, uh, because of its, uh, different, uh, body parts. It's, all of its arms have different magic elements, and it's, uh, the left arm has the elements of fire and earth. So we'll do damage of those types, and it will also, um, and it will also, uh, um, absorb those elements. And its right arm has the elements of ice and lightning, which then, uh, which, yeah, it absorbs those. And the battle only ends when the core dies. So, uh, yeah. Now, if you can stop using Bizarro Energy, that would be great. So, seems that we've already killed one body part of it. Yeah. Bizarro Sephiroth C is the thing that we really want to target, but honestly, all the parts are worth targeting. Uh, right magic E is dead, and the head portion is dead. The head has an interesting gimmick that I'll get into, um, later. Alright, worried about the other members? Not really. This is what I mean by I want to ignore the other party members, because honestly, I view them more as a hindrance than, um, than, uh, really any help. Um, yeah, it's core? Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to hit the core, um, let's hit this guy with a comet too. But, uh, yeah. I'm sorry if my commentary is all over the place, but blah 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 blah. There's a lot of things to talk about in this battle. So, going over some more technical stuff about, uh, Bizarro Sephiroth, um, no, not worried about any of the, of the party members, is that, um, each body part gets a boost in HP for every character that is level 99, which is the highest level that you can get in Final Fantasy VII. Its head is revived. The head constantly goes through a cycle of dying, or you can kill it, and then it will eventually revive. Alright. So. Come on, come on. Alright. I do want to actually be sure to take out the head. Because taking out the head is important for, um, for, uh, I guess the end of this battle, I want to say. Bizarro Sephiroth A, come on. No, wait, no, I want to be targeting C. Uh, not- still not worried about the other party members, I do not care. Uh, crap, I shouldn't have targeted that one. Uh, sense? Let's sense the Bizarro Sephiroth C. Hmm, looks like we need to use another big guard. Okay. The battle ends when the core dies, so the core is really what you want to look- is what you want to attack. It has 14,000 HP, and I think you have to kill the body beforehand? It might be like Jamar armor in the Proud Claw battle where you have to kill the Jamar armor to do damage to the main body. Um, oh crap, that, no, that's not gonna work. Um, uh, hmm. Um, sorry, I'm freezing up. It's just like, I don't want... Oh, I couldn't sense? Really? Okay. Well, that's slightly annoying. Alright. Well, I guess a, a little bit of uh, translation stuff about Bizarro Sephiroth is that this isn't- is that Bizarro Sephiroth is not actually what this phase is called in Japanese. Because this is known as Sephiroth Rebirth instead of uh, Bizarro Sephiroth. I don't know how it was lost in translation, but honestly this guy is kind of bizarre, so yeah. Let's talk about this- let's listen to this music a bit. Isn't this such a good song? Like, really. This this is such a good boss theme. Uh, it's like kind of... It kind of gets you pumped to do it, but it's also like... Not too happy, you could say? Alright, so let's let's uh, kind of discuss some of Bizarro Sephiroth's... Um, it's in, it's more interesting attacks. Oh crap, what did we kill? What did we kill? 
Okay, Bizarro Sephiroth, um, it has an attack called Aurora Fence, which is meant to a to a target itself, but it accidentally targets the party. It's an ability that cures all status ailments, but it's accidentally programmed to target the body. I mean, not the par body, the party, instead of the head. So that's a nice little coding bug. Um, yeah. And... I guess something about Genova Life that's also relevant in this battle is uh, is Ultima. If you do use Ultima within the Genova the Genova Synthesis battle, then it will actually boost the HP of uh, of uh, Bizarro Sephiroth by sixty thousand. So yeah, you kind of want to avoid using Ultima. It will kind of just like completely kill it. So. Uh, it can make it a little bit easier, but uh, honestly, you don't really need it. Just uh, you can just click Knights of the Round Table once, and oh wait, no, not Ultima, not Ultima. Using Knights of the Round Table will give Bizarro Sephiroth another sixty thousand. I'm sorry, not Ultima. Uh, my mistake. Uh, I do want to keep on killing the head for a reason that we will see soon. And another, uh, let's discuss another attack. This also has an attack called. Um, Stigma, which in which induces poison and slow, which you know that can be annoying. But I mean, by now, you, you probably have enough ribbons to not really uh, to not really care too much about it. And Jesus, how much? Stop! Stop restoring yourself. It's annoying. Um, Cloud, you can hit it with a magic. Oh, is it dead? Is the body dead? It's a good thing I hit the head. Uh, no, I'm not. We're... No, crap. No, 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 I don't want. Oh, crap. Uh oh. If the part, if a part dies, change to a different body. Head portions. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna send all of my crap at the head so then I can just. I'm just gonna try to just do damage so I can s switch back to my main party. No, I really didn't want this to happen. Alright, back to the main party. Yeah, if a part dies, you can change to a different party. But whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and hit this with a magic breath, considering all the all the arms are dead, so it's not like it'll uh, feel the feel the benefits of absorbing any health or any of absorbing any damage or anything. Um, uh, let's let's do a big guard. Okay, this battle is honestly kind of dragging on a slight bit. Uh, I guess I guess I could talk about ja, about something about Genova synthesis that. Or about Genova in general that I never actually brought up because if I'm gonna be honest I forgot what it's called but the different titles of Genova being um, being uh, birth life and death uh, you know that that follows the okay here's a roar fence yeah you see it accidentally targets the party and then it uh, it it heals us well it's supposed to it's supposed to heal Sephiroth, but it accidentally heals us. But, okay, yeah. So, I'll put up a, I'll put up what it is on screen right now, but I forgot what it's called. It's a Buddhist concept. I think it's the, it's the cycle of life. I want to say. Okay, I'm gonna use W item to use some Turbo Ethers on Nanaki and Cloud. Uh, okay. Sid, I think, is going to be doing a lot less damage because of how low his MP is. Well, I mean, it's still at 50%, which is still not bad. And if you could stop healing yourself so much, then I would have an exponentially better... You know what? Nanaki... No, Hades isn't that great. Uh, Cloud, uh, use... Uh, hit it with Bahamut Zero. Wait, no. Uh, wait, who has Pandora's Box? Who has Pandora's Box? Uh, I guess something about Pandora's Box is that... You know, uh, that Dragon Zombie isn't actually your only opportunity to get Pandora's Box, because Genova Synthesis actually has a chance of using it on you. So, if you missed it in the Dragon Zombie battle, then you can still get it from Genova. So, I guess that's a decent failsafe? Not really a failsafe, but eh, whatever. Alright, let's hit it with a big old Bahamut. Maybe, maybe do some more damage to the body. Okay. That's probably a dead head right there. Uh, what does Sid have equipped? Another Bahamut. Alright, another Bahamut Zero coming right at ya. 
Oh, Cloud also has Pandora's. Oh yeah, everyone got Pandora's box from AoE attack. Yeah, let's just keep on spamming Pandora's box. And uh, yeah, Shadow Flare is kind of just like a little bit of a weaker version of Pandora's box. So uh, funny how you can accidentally just like outclass it in the same battle that you get uh, that you get it. But uh, yeah. All right, Muhammad Zero nukes this guy from the atmosphere. 8,000 damage. Come on, come on. Just keep on, keep on doing good damage. Keep on doing good damage. Uh, we're gonna have to use another W item, probably. Honestly, it might have been a good idea to put W item on Sid instead of Nanaki, just because of Sid's, uh, more utility focus. Alright, we use Pandora's box. Let's get, um... I can't switch to Nanaki yet. Um... Let's just hit the body with a flare. Okay, yeah, head's dead. He's gonna ask us to switch. I'm gonna say no again. Jeez, this battle is going on for a while. Zaro energy, blah blah blah. I think the healing, the healing aspect is the worst part of this battle. How it just decides to heal itself at any given moment. Uh, Nanaki, you're gonna have to use a Turbo Ether on uh, Cloud and Sid. And Sid, you can go ahead and... Are we still in... Yes, we are still in haste. Um, slow is probably not going to work on Sephiroth. Just because, I mean, big boss character, I don't expect him to be affected by many status elements. I guess one good thing is that uh, we aren't really taking much damage from him, oddly enough. Oh, I was visually glitching. I don't know if that means like he's at low health or something if he just starts glitching but uh that'd be nice if it is if it is a indicator all right head heads revived again i really want to make sure that head is dead when we kill the main boss all right this pandora's box is gonna kill it so that's that's gonna be good all right the head dies you can see i'm starting to get bored of this battle right all right not worried about the other party members Kill the body. Uh, I really don't know how much health this body has. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put the put the health numbers on screen right now just to show you how much health the body has. And, oh wait, no, that's the body dying. That's the body dying right now. Okay, yeah, it's dead. It's dead. Okay. Is the head dead too? Okay, the head dead. The head's dead too. There he is, in his majestic, iconic glory. Meet Safer Sephiroth. This is the Sephiroth battle that everyone knows. Let's start up by, all right, he's gonna start off by putting up a wall. We are gonna do the same. We're gonna put up a, uh, we're gonna put up a big ol', uh, big ol', uh, big guard. Um, Nanaki, I'm actually gonna ask you to use D Barrier. Um, yeah. Use D-Barrier on him. And this is an attack called, uh... Wait, no, this is... Wait, this, was that Shadow Flare? Yeah, that's Shadow... Yeah, that's Shadow Flare. Okay. So, Safer Sephiroth is a very interesting battle. Because, oddly enough, it's... This battle goes in... Goes in a preset, uh, goes in a preset order of actions. So this is a very predictable battle in what Sephiroth does. I'll get down to the cycle eventually, but I guess I do want to go back to the previous boss fights and uh, what effects they can have on this battle. If you use Knights of the Round Table on Genova Synthesis, it will also add on another eighty thousand health to J to Safer Sephiroth. So you kind of want to. Avoid doing that crap. Do you? 
No, I don't think he has a long range of material. I might as well just throw some gill here. Have 7,000. And you know the boss fight is intense when it gives you a Latin choir on a PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation. All right, 9,999 damage. Okay, Coin being overpowered as always. And about the head, um, the head of, Sef of Bizarro Sephiroth, every time you kill the head, it will actually shave off 100 HP from Saber Sephiroth's max health, which, uh, oh crap. Yeah, that will actually, uh, it can go up to 29,400 max HP shaved off, by the way. But let's go ahead and take a seat and look back at this. Was that a two minute attack animation? Yep, that was a two minute attack animation. And it's still- hold on, never mind, it's still not done yet. Um, where's life? Where's- where's- alright, 8,000 damage on all of us! Okay, heal, 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 Okay, uh, Nanaki, 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 Nanaki. Um, Turbo Ether, Turbo Ether, you, Turbo Ether. Cloud. How many Turbo Ethers do I have? Six. Oh, that's not that great. And I accidentally duplicated one. And now he uses an attack called Heartless Angel. Uh, which, uh, isn't that great? But, uh, yeah. So, I, there's a lot I want to talk about with, uh, Safer Sephiroth here. First of all, let's go ahead and take a look at his, uh, his, uh, cycle of attacks. He will always start off by using either by using either wall or D spell. This alternates just uh this alternates in use just based on like whatever just based on how many times he's gone through this cycle of attacks. Then he will use either Dean, which is a weak physical attack if you use D spell, and he, then he or he will use Shadow Flare otherwise. And oh god, we need healing. We need healing. Uh Tier 3. Okay. Number th all right, the third attack he will do is a just a random physical attack. It's just yeah, it's just a weak physical attack. And then the fourth thing he does is that he flies up going long range. And need of course needing long range for magic to hit him. Uh or yeah, or yeah. Yeah, what am I saying? Long range attacks. The fifth thing he does is Pale Horse. This is an attack that will just litter the field in status ailments, and it's kind of his whole shtick, being status ailments. Then he will use Supernova, which, funnily enough, is an attack that can't possibly kill the- OH MY GOD WE GOT HIM! WE GOT HIM! WE GOT HIM! Okay. Well, alright, I'm just gonna get all the crap that I want to say out right now. Uh, Supernova does 15 sixteenths of your health, meaning that it can't kill you because it's a gravity-based attack. This is actually different in Japan, where it's a completely different attack with a much shorter animation that does about 2,000 health. The seventh thing he does is break if his HP was above 25%, or he'll use Heartless Angel if it's below 25%. And he used Heartless Angel, which showed us that he actually didn't have that much health uh, at that point. 
And then the eighth thing he does is dropping back down into short range, and then the cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. Alright, there were some changes in the Japanese version of Final Fantasy VII, where instead he will open up with Pale Horse, and he will do an attack that does uh, percent damage instead of Shadow Flare. And he will also use Death Sentence instead of Heartless Angel, and Death Sentence, you know, it inflicts death, or puts you on a timer, I don't know which one. Alright, yeah, so that's really all you need to beat him. You need big guard healing, a lot of healing, and good ol' big ol' magic attacks. And there's actually a lot of cultural significance of One-Winged Angel, or cultural references of One-Winged Angel that I didn't actually get a chance to go over, so I'll just w run through them rapid fire right now. Alright, starting off with Judaism and Hebrew. His, uh, his appearance may be a seraphim, which is the which is kind of the, it's the kind of angel that is like a multi-winged being. It's a very high-ranking angel in angelology. In Japanese, Sephiroth's name is Sefa, and this was actually mistranslated into English as Sefer, because this actually is a Hebrew name, or a Hebrew name called uh, Sefer, which means a book. This is just a most mislocalization. And now for his name. Sephiroth are the manifestations of God, allowing him to be physical slash metaphysical, or allowing him to appear in the physical world. And Sefer Sephiroth uh, mean, is, that means the ten Sephiroth, which is the ten aspects of creation. And now going to the Latin lyrics. The Latin lyrics are in order, or line by line, Estuan's interius, burning inside. Irave heminti, with violent anger. Sors imanis, fate monstrous. Etinanus, and empty. Veni veni venias, come come, o come. Nememori fascias, do not let me die. Gloriosa, generosa. Everything in that, everything in the one winged angel theme. Every, except Sephiroth, Gloriosa, and Generosa comes from a fr comes from a medieval uh, poetry compilation called the Carmina Burana. And two more things: the astrophysics equations that appear in Supernova aren't actually the most correct equations. The first two equations calculate the sun and the planet's potential attractive forces, and then the third one is Earth's potential attractive forces. And then the last one is just the area of a circle, which is a mistake, because, you know, asteroids are not 2D objects. The canonical explanation for Supernova is that Sephiroth teleports the party into a solar system that is going through a supernova to just to throw them in the face of all that to make them experience the pain of having all their health sucked away from them but not actually killing them that's what pale horse pale horse is basically just a stronger version of that and then the final thing that that i want to go over it's oh by the way no the sun can't go supernova it is far too small and finally is the Celestial Spheres, which is the diagram that first appears in the, si in the Supernova animation. This is a diagram by Greek philosopher Tol or by Greek, scient Greek scientist Ptolemy. The diagram shows the solar system, and uh, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus haven't been discovered yet, but they're in there anyways. Um, but yeah, the seven bodies, or, well no, they're not in there anyways, but the seven bodies in the diagram could allude to Final Fantasy VII's whole seven theming. All right, yeah, that's Sefer Sephiroth. That was actually quite quick, much quicker than Bizarro Sephiroth. Probably just because it doesn't freaking heal itself. Maybe, maybe I should maybe I should have used Knights of the Round Table on Genova just to see how much. Moving on now. This is all we could do. Wait. What about Holy? What's gonna happen to the planet? That... I don't know. Isn't the rest up to the planet? You're right. We've done all that we could do. Alright, everyone. We did our best. That's it. Let's go home proud.
What happened? I feel it. What? He is still here. Still. Cloud. He's laughing. Cloud. This is a part where now PlayStation tells me I can't record, which is why I'm on OBS right now. The final showdown with Sephiroth. Giving us just enough time to finish him off.
This game means so much for me. This is this is one of the things that I came back to in 2021. You know, that's a time when, you know, it was 2021. We were all stuck at home. We didn't really have much to do. So I just went back to play Final Fantasy VII. Like, I got it in 2019, but I didn't really get far. I didn't get past, like, the Coral Prison, I think. No, no, I, I know I got past Coral Prison. It was, like, Mountain Evil that I got stuck in, but, uh... Yeah, it's Final Fantasy VII, which, as of right now, is my favorite game of all time. Is it a good idea to play one of my favorite games of all time as, you know, one of my first Let's Plays? I don't really know. Probably not, but who knows. Whatever. I love this game. I love the characters. I love the music. This introduced me to the Final Fantasy series, and, you know, now that I'm done with this, I'm, pro I'm probably gonna start playing more original Final Fantasy games, start playing Final Fantasy 2, 3, maybe even 8, who knows? But, uh, yeah, I hope you, I hope you guys like this, because yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful little game right there. About that little, little final scene with Aerith. There is a theory going around that, um, this entire game is a vision of well, what Aerith sees in the future, considering that that screenshot that it ended on, that is like the first thing we see once we get into Midgar in the opening cutscene. So who knows? Maybe this game is just a vision. I mean, we can kind of say that it is maybe kind of a vision due to the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff. I don't know, I've never beat Final Fantasy VII Remake. I don't really... I want to see where the plot goes. I just don't really care that much. But, uh... Yeah. So, yeah, that's Final Fantasy VII. Uh, momentous for its time. You know, released over three discs. Beautiful full-motion cutscenes, which... I know, objectively, according to today's standards... Bleh, but... I really like I really like the old 64-bit uh, visual style. I think it I think it's really charming, especially this game and its pre and its pre-drawn backgrounds. Those are really pretty, and uh, yeah. You know, I actually went to the Distant Worlds Final Fantasy concert performed by the Detroit Symphony Orchestra like a month ago, and. Uh, one of the songs that they play in every concert is One Winged Angel, and they were playing the main theme of Final Fantasy, uh, yeah, the main theme of Final Fantasy, giving off credits for the staff of Final Fantasy and Nobu Oimatsu, you know, people like that. Everyone was giving them a standing ovation, the band stood up and bowed, and then they started playing One Winged Angel while everyone was still standing. I knew it was coming personally, but, yeah, I love, I like One Winged Angel, which... Kinda sucks that it didn't last longer, because that's one of the coolest fights in the game. And <laughs> it is still funny how Supernova, two minute animation, is 15 sixteenths of your current health, therefore it can't kill ya. Which uh Oh my god, there You know what? I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. You I will Yeah, Sephiroth Choir. I will uh you know what? I don't know if I'll actually ever see you guys again. I don't know if I want to do. I, I don't want to. I don't know if I want to. I don't know when I'm coming back. You know, could be next next year, next two years. I don't know, but for now, see you guys then.